Well, praise God. Um, excited to have Tim Ham. He hasn't preached here in a long time. It, I mean, it feels like years. I think it has been years. So uh, he's got a new ministry that they're involved with, and he's going to explain that. And um, uh, he's just he's just going to, you know, I don't know what else he's going to do. But anyways, he's going to bring the word. So praise God for that. Give the Lord a hand as, as he comes up. Well, it's good to be here. Um, it has been years, and uh, so I'm glad you left coffee up here for me. Uh, Carrie and I are on the endeavor. We, December 5th, we resigned First Assembly of God. Uh, well, we resigned 16, day, 16 years to the day of when we were elected at First Assembly. And... Um, join the Human Coalition, which is the largest pro-life group in America. And we have been traveling around Kansas talking about Human Coalition. And um, it is just one of the most exciting things that we're going to do. So the first portion is talking about Human Coalition, and then I'm going to preach. And uh, I'm excited. We have literally, what happens in the Human Coalition, I get to preach in all denominations. Um, and so we have a brochure that we're going to this is how we're going to talk about human coalition through this brochure. And uh, I got the, I got the preaching Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist. Um, we've driven up to Kobe, Kansas, which is, by the way, really long to get out there. Um, we didn't realize how far it was until we drove out there. Um, and then we, uh, we, Spoken in a Foursquare church in Chinook a couple weeks ago, and that was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. So God is just really opening doors, and uh, we just trust the Lord. We are actually, in a way, missionaries, and uh, just excited about what took place. So I'm going to start out, and I hope he has it ready. We have a video I want to show you. Um, it's called Rescue Children, Saving Families. My church, I always say it's going to work. Amen. Hopefully. Is this the Human Coalition video? Yes. Oh, let me switch it over here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are beautiful. You are unique. There's no one else like you. Human beings. Complex, wonderful, each one of us, handmade in the image of our Creator. Our lives are full of possibilities, all kinds of possibilities. Right around the corner, something amazing is about to happen. But we can also be shaken by the unexpected. Life can be difficult at dangerous at times, and sometimes even unfair. It's a mystery how joy and pain, laughter and tears help form who we are. But we're still beautiful. You are created to laugh, to run, to help, and to overcome. You are created to live. You are beautiful. That is one of the most important statements. You were created to live. You are beautiful. And that is the whole purpose of Human Coalition. You were created to live. You are beautiful. God has created each one of you perfect. And so if you have that brochure, and, and we have some PowerPoint, what is coalition? Uh, who we are? Who we are, it, it says it right here. It says human coalition is one of the largest pro-life, pro-women, 
pro-family organizations in the country committed to make abortion unthinkable and unnecessary by helping lead an inclusive movement that values human dignity, dignity and establish a culture of life. What do we do? Uh, with the support of thousands of partners nationwide, Human Coalition operates a nation rescue system. I want you to recognize that statement. It's going to be the newest statement that's coming down the pike. It's a national rescue system. We're, if you say the word abortion <coughs> long enough, it becomes a negative connotation. But a national rescue system, we believe in rescuing babies and serving families. That's what we're doing. We're rescuing children. And we, the Human Coalition goes beyond just rescuing babies. We're serving the families as well. We go beyond just helping uh, mothers with children. We go and help them and, and serve them with continual care. And uh, women facing unexpected pregnancies in some of the most abortion-dense communities across the country. The network of care reaches women actively seeking an abortion Rescue, rescues them and their children from the horror of abortion and restores their entire families to stability. And so that's so important. So on this, on this uh, brochure, you'll see three statements. Rescue, reach, rescue, and restore. Uh, that sounds really uh, interesting. But reach, it says, Human Coalition reaches women online. In 1973, Human Coalition was literally started online. Uh, two businessmen came together and they said, how can, is this a way that we can reach those who are actually thinking the unthinkable of, of taking the life of their baby in the womb? And so they just started uh, telehealth and women would call in. And there has been over 4,000 plus babies rescued this way. And uh, Human Coalition, reaches women online who are planning to abort and connects them to a contact center. Uh, so we do it through internet marketing and a contact center, and then it goes to the rescue part. The contact center connects women to a life-affirming care in their community. And you're like, well, we don't really have that. Guess what? Uh, there's Telecare Women's Clinic, brick and mortar, and in bigger cities right now, we have six to seven different different brick and mortar. We just opened one in Chicago, Illinois. And one of my goals, personally, I'm the only one in Kansas, uh, there's actually another one that is actually a hiring people uh, in, in Kansas. I'm the one that's boots on the ground going to churches. One of my personal goals, I would love to see a brick and mortar in Kansas, whether it's in Wichita or Kansas City. And I would like to see a mobile unit go around as well. The Catholic organization actually has a mobile unit that goes to the Baptist church in Burlington. I would love to see more of that. And then we, pregnancy resources. We have clinics and centers in Emporia and we just connecting with those. And Human Coalition wants to network with the local uh, places, the life-affirming centers. Restore, families are off, offered the uh, opportunity to receive long-term care to meet their needs, continual care. See, a lot of times people say, hey, don't do that, and then stop. Well, Humans Co Coalition wants to go beyond that, and then bridge to local churches, and guess what? This is a local church. So you can become a resource for ladies that have either had one or think of had one. You can speak life into them. You can become a resource. So the bottom of the brochure says, how do you get involved? You pray. Prayer is so important. In fact, there's my business card in the back, and we also have a prayer card for us as we travel. It's our ministry card. Please take those and remember us in prayer uh, as we continue. Because like I said, we're kind of missionaries now, and I never thought we'd ever be doing this, but we are missionaries, and we travel almost every weekend now. So ask God to end abortion. Volunteer and serve women and families in your community. They're all around us. Small communities, medium communities, and large communities. Everywhere. Love people. Love girls. Help them through their troubled times. 
give, support the National Rescue System to reach more moms, rescue more children, and restore more families. And there's a QR code. My wife didn't know what a QR code until I started putting them on my business cards. So uh, that will take you to the Human Coalition, and there's a, a place that you can give online. And uh, just pray about that, because the more funds that we make, the more ability we can continue to help. And God has really blessed the Human Coalition. And next week, this is just a tie-in. We're recording because i got to present this to my supervisor. Um, next week on Super Bowl Sunday, I know you're going to watch the game. That's great. It doesn't matter who wins. I always say that the guys in the black and white are always going to win. So that's a joke. That's where you should laugh because the referees always win. Carrie and I are going to do Church on the Couch. If you ever follow us on Facebook, Church on the Couch is where – we talk about Jesus, and it's Church on the Couch. But we are actually doing the halftime show so that you don't have to worry about uh, faulty material falling off people during the halftime show and watching the disgusting things that happen. And you can turn on into a spiritual devotional. And uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to talk about top ten things you shouldn't supersize. And uh, we're just going to have fun. And, so that, and then we're going to we're going to promote and talk about Human Coalition. And so we're just going to have fun. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, if you um, comment, we're going to go live for a few minutes today. So if you comment on the live feed, and, and he's, he made it sound very spiritual. We're kind of silly, actually. So it'll make you laugh. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, so I think we're going to go live today. And if you uh, go ahead and comment on that today, we'll put you in a drawing. We're going to give away a $25 uh, Texas Roadhouse gift certificate. But um, so it's just kind of a fun way to bring Jesus into that time. Um, you may really love the halftime show, and I'm totally okay with that. But if you want to spend 10 or 15 minutes with us, we would love to have you stream that with us. We're going to talk about Human Coalition. Um, we're going to cut up about supersizing things. I really hope you can think of things that should never be supersized that are appropriate. Right? Okay. Appropriate. Appropriate, because I feel like we could go places with that. And then also, um, just give away a bunch of gift certificates and coffee cups. And we're also going to talk about the Millers and um, some of the stuff that they're doing with the church mobilization. So it's going to be a fun time. We'd love to have you. So where, where is this located at? It's on Tim Preachman Hammy's Facebook page. That's where we're going to be live streaming from. So if you're not our friend, befriend us. We'd yeah. love to have you. And take a card at the back. It'll lead you there. Yeah, it'll lead you to our website, and then you can just go from there. All right, so now it's time for me to preach. See, that's all. See, that was easy, right? It was <laughs> It was not difficult. It wasn't hurtful. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to talk from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. I love the Word of God, don't you? Amen. Amen. And uh, that's the premise of what we do. The church is so important. The Bible is so important. It's living, active, and stronger than any double the sword. I love, I'm glad that the Lord moved us into a place that I still get to preach. And... Uh, and someone asked me, so how does it feel to be out of ministry? And I says, I'm not out of ministry. I'm still, I'm still in it more than ever. I just, I don't have a church that I go to every day. But I'm actually going, I'm, I'm talking to pastors and every day. I'm, I'm calling churches literally all the time. But I get to minister. I get to come alongside. I get to see people. Like I said, I haven't been here for many years. But I know you. I've been here. I know this church. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 is, is the love chapter. But let's pray before we start. Lord, I ask that you speak, that you encourage, that you convict, that you encourage. But Lord, we just ask that you bring this, your word to light to us. And Lord, we just ask that you bless this time in your word. We love you so much in your name. Amen. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, we know this. It says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. But listen to this one, the three last words. Love never ends. Isn't that so true? Some of us had some problems with the middle, didn't we? Do you ever get irritable? You ever have a problem with patience? I mean, wait a minute. Okay, here's the rule. 
you could preach with me. I forgot to do this. I do this in every church. I've done it in the Methodist church. I, I've done it, well, I've done it in the Christian church. I have rules for preaching. I don't think your pastor has rules for preaching, but I have rules for preaching. <laughs> do you ever want to get out of here? Yes. So here's, if you like how I preach, you say amen. Everyone try this out, because really, I could preach for a long time, because I'm a, I've been amen. in the ministry 28 years. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try this out. Amen. Amen. Okay, you, you got that down. Now, if I get on a bunny trail, you just say, help him, Jesus. Let's try this. Okay. Okay, there's there's just a couple that just want to, pre want to preach for a long time. So, I love preaching, and I've been in enough different countries that I went to Africa, and they preached for like two or three hours. Been in Honduras, and they preached for a long time. I've been in Haiti, they preached for a long time. So, it's okay. I, I know how to preach. But if you don't preach with me, we'll be here for a while. And I can actually extend this for hours. And we don't want to do that, do we? So will you help me to preach so I can make this short? Sure. Amen. All right. So I'm going to read this again so you can say amen. All right? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. Amen. Well, there should be a little more excitement. One person says, I can't believe you, you, you're, you know, you're not in the South, because I love to preach exciting, and so you need to help me, okay? okay. Or we need to get the espresso maker out of you. Today, I want to speak about the human coalition and all that it entails talking about the national rescue system, about saving babies in certain families is an important topic today, especially with all that's going on. The, the, the Supreme Court is deciding what it will look like. And, and if you look at the newscast and you see what's going on, we're actually winning. It's going to change. Are we ready for that kind of change? I know I am. In fact, in, fact, in Kansas in August, there's going to be a big vote, in, and I hope we make the right decision. Are we pro-life? Are we excited about changes? I think we are. Amen. Amen. See, the vision statement of the Human co Coalition is this. Human Coalition is the leading by grace. In Romans 5, 20, it says, Now the low come in the, the instant increase of the trespass, but where sin increases, grace must abound all the more. Here's the problem is, the world doesn't comprehend the true definition of love, does it? Love is, is the epitome, and it is, it is delusion. How many times, how many love hamburgers? Do you really love hamburgers? Or do you like hamburgers? See, we really, really delusion, or it's just really kind of messed up, because we, we, don't, we don't hug a hamburger. We eat a hamburger. We like a hamburger. We don't kiss a hamburger. We don't, well, maybe you do. I hug it with my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> you would digest it, but you don't love it. So the world says, I love all these things, but I love God. I'm unconditionally in love with God, and he unconditionally loved me. He puts up with us, right? But the world has all these definitions of love. John 13, 35 says that we will be known as Jesus if we love one another. See, but the church is a split. The number of divorces is the same inside the church as it is outside. People in the church doesn't share this, their pain with each other for fear of beginning being judged. Oh, my goodness. Amen, Pastor. That is good preaching. If you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it for myself. Because that is so true. The church is becoming so, uh, so polluted. We, we need to understand that, that there is, there, the church is becoming polluted. Yes, there is problems within the church as well as out. And know what? We still need to love one another just as Christ has loved the church. Amen. We need to love one another. And the problem is we're not very honest with one another because we're fearful of being judged. Why? Because we don't know how to love. We sure know how to judge one another. Here's the solution. Many words are used for God. God defines only one 
only, only one kind of love for us. It's called agape. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Let's read it again. It says, love is patient and kind. Love, love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant. I'm going to get down and preach to myself again. Or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Amen. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices with truth. That's right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Right. Come on, church, say this Amen. with me. Love never ends. See, love suffers a long time. See, pain and hardship. Suffering is, is a long time. Pain and hardship. Being loved is different than being patient. Patience is short-term love. Genesis 12, 2 through 4, God promised Abraham that he would be the father of a great nation. <coughs> he was 75 years old. You know the father of Abraham, right? You know, I... I, I promised or I challenged or I warned every church I've been in that if they didn't get excited, we were going to sing Father Abraham. <laughs> you know, actions and all. Because Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. I grew up in the church. I was in, in nursery school and, and kids church and we used to sing that. He was 75 years old. Genesis 12, 2 through 4 says, And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And, I, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And, and you, the families of the earth, will, shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Hebrews 6.15 says this, Abraham, after patiently enduring, obtained what God had promised. Hebrews 6.15 says this, and thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. And Abraham <coughs> was 100 years old. Isaac was born. He was 175 years old when Abraham died. Think about that for just a minute. Abraham patiently endured it for at least 25 years, but really 100 for that promise. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Isaac, the child, became the beginning of a promise. I want to pause, and I want you to think about that. Isaac, the child, became the beginning of a promise. Amen. Let's say it again. <coughs> Isaac, the child became the beginning of a promise. Amen. When you were born, you are a promise. You are a promise of a lineage. You are a promise. You're still a promise. Even though some of you are adults, you're still a promise to your family. If you're, when you're a child, you are a promise. Isaac was a promise. The baby was a promise. I'm a pro-life speaker. Babies are a promise. Amen. We should never take the life of a child. Every child's a promise. That's right. Yeah. You know what? This is good preaching. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say to them, you are a promise. You are a promise. Let's continue. Be kind and tender. Even when someone is harsh towards us and causes us to suffer, we are called to be kind. Man, we don't like that. When someone's <laughs> harsh towards us and causes us to suffer, we are called to be kind. Amen. It's also continued on, don't, does not envy, does not parade itself and boast, does not get puffed up or pride. See, those things literally are all about me. So we're called to love the other person. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own way. It is not easily provoked. I'm in control. I choose to love. And there is nothing you can do about it. Your behavior does not dictate how I act towards you. 
too many times in this world, whatever happens dictates my behavior. In church today, if you don't say hi to me, that's going to dictate how I treat you for the rest of the day. But I need to choose to love you no matter what. Amen. That's right. Amen. Right? Yeah. In this world, even outside, we are called to love one another no matter what the situation may be. When I was a young kid, young younger person, I'm almost 52, but everyone's like, oh, you're still young. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I worked for inner city kids with inner city kids with Salvation Army. And when I got hired, here's the one question. If one of those kids spit on you, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wipe the spit off and still keep working. What if he does it again? I'm going to wipe the spit off and keep going. See, the very fact is, remember, children are a promise. No matter what they do, you still have to love them. That's right. Still to this day, if someone does something wrong to you, what do you do? You still love them. Amen. I love what I do. I love what I do every day of the week. On Wednesdays, I work with inmates. On Fridays, I work with the AA and NA program. I love what I do. I, when I travel, I love what I do. Do I meet kind of weird people? Yes, I'm one of them. But the very fact is, we have to love one another. Right. Parents to a child. This is so same true. We, we love our children just as the Heavenly Father loves us no matter what we do, unconditionally. That's right. Yes. My children, they're not perfect. Everyone goes, oh, pastor kids are perfect. I'm sorry. You're not perfect. <laughs> My kids aren't perfect. They all go, what? Pastor's kids are always perfect. They're never perfect. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in my, in my office, and, and I get a, I, I'm listening, I'm listening, and, and all of a sudden, I hear one of my kids driving my car, and they got, they got pulled over. And I'm like, okay, what's this? And the name went across the radio, and I went, oh, okay. And I didn't say anything, just listen to the name and listen to the car, my car, getting pulled over. I'm like, all right. After it all was said and done, I get a call from my daughter. Dad, I got pulled over. And I went, oh, okay. So did you learn your lesson? I'm never going to speed again. <laughs> Don't tell mom. <laughs> I'm not going to tell mom. You're going to tell mom. <laughs> so that evening, she come home and she looks at me. Don't tell mom. And I said, you're going to tell mom. You still love your kids no matter what? That's right. Amen. Amen. No matter what. You think no evil because... There's enough evil in the world. Your kid is going to do something wrong, but you're still going to love them. Amen. How you view the object of your love. You, you, you know they're going to do something wrong, but you still love them and you still forgive them just as the Heavenly Father forgives you. That's right. Love is wanting God's very best for them. Anything less, listen to this, anything less is rooted in sin. That's right. Amen. Does not rejoice in iniquity. See, the root word uh, is, is the same as righteousness made the opposite, unrighteous. <clears throat> this is a very subtle way. We, we rejoice in someone's unrighteous. It could be like a young man who spends a night with an attractive woman, iniquity, or wanting to be included with the gossip. <gasps> I just said gossip in church. Iniquity, because gossip is sin. And many other subtle forms. See, we, re, we, don't, we should never rejoice in that kind of stuff because that's sin. We should always rejoice in the truth. Amen. 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 That's right. Know what is true. See, truth is not a doormat. Man. Speak the truth. Rejoice in the truth. Know that God is truth. And it ends in this, in the passage of Scripture, it says, bear all things, 
believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. We bear and endure because we believe God is who he says he is and that he loves us. We have hope because we know what God has done for us through Christ. We can bear and endure because we believe and have hope. Amen. This is the kind of love that never fails. Even if the object of love rejects us, right. we become more like Christ. See, this love cannot fail. This kind of love is not easy. It's like loving someone that doesn't love you back. Right. I have a cat at home. Oh, by the way, I do not like cats. This cat doesn't love me. And I don't love it. But it still wants me to love it. It's a very love and hate relationship. <laughs> this kind of love is not easy. But when something doesn't love you, it's very hard to love it back. It's true. In this world, there will be people who does not love you because of who you are and whose you are, but you still need to love them mm -hmm. because God's right. love is in you. Love isn't easy, but it is also not optional. Right. In the early church, many flocked together because they loved each other well. But kind of let's look at the church today who is considering abortion or had one, what is their view on the church today? You ready? There's four of them. Judgmental, mean, they don't understand. Or the big one, hypocritical. See, the view of the church is even true of women who are in the church because one third of every woman in the church have had an abortion. <clears throat> so if someone comes in the church or someone that has had an abortion, think about it. Why should we judge them? Why should we be mean to them? We should, we should try to understand. We should not be hypocritical. We should love them because that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> we should come alongside them. God is love. We should do our best to come alongside them and show God's grace and mercy. See, there's a problem. This doesn't just go with people who've had abortion. This is for those who've been divorced. This is who've been incarcerated to come into your church. This is for the ex-drug addicts that come into your church, the ex-alcoholics. This is for those who come in your church and they look at you, they come in the front door, the front door and they look in your church and they look at them and go, I don't know if this church will accept me. God lo love must abound more. Amen. That's yes. right. Amen. <clears throat> so let's apply this. So talk. How, how do you how do you change the atmosphere? Talk about abortion in the church with grace and compassion and truth. Care for one another when we are caught in sin, and you know what? Any kind of sin. Meet each other's need. Be generous. And most of all, be joyful. Try Amen. smiling. Mm -hmm. It does the face good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Suffer long with your brothers, sister, believe and hope. And be kind to one another. How do we end abortion? Work with a women's care clinic or life-affirming pregnancy center to support women in your community through existing ministries of the church. Mm -hmm. So if you have someone in your church who is pregnant, come alongside. Have a baby shower. Figure a way. I, I had a girl in my youth group growing up. You could give them a baby shower. Support them through this. Talk, of, uh, talk about abortion and the church desire not to judge people, but to love and provide for them. Um, act. Sign the pro-life declaration on prolife.org. Pray. Download the prayer app of the prolifeapp.com. 
partner with the Human Coalition I talked about. <coughs> and it's on the QR code. We may be a big organization, but all the support, you say, well, I can't give much or don't know what to give, but any little or more can give. It was amazing just the last week. I had someone in Kansas, didn't even know who they were, give a $10,000 gift from Kansas. And they go, and we meet every Monday with my group, we're tell, we do everything computerized. And they go, hey, Tim, someone from Kansas gave $10,000. I says, I don't even know who they are. And they said, just own it. <laughs> okay, how am I supposed to accept that? So I just said, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to give another gift. Every, you know, and I'm not here to just raise money. I'm here to encourage the church to love people, to love people. Babies. Amen. To serve. Yes. Save babies, serve families. And love one another. That's my goal. I'm going to invite my wife up, up to share this story. And then she's going to sing. I am. I After Charlie wants me to sing during the offering. That's good. <clears throat> That's good. Hey. All right. Well, I'm Carrie, Tim's wife. We've been married for 28 <coughs> years. And when we first got married, um, we didn't want babies right away because I was only 19, but in a couple of years into our marriage, we hadn't had a baby, and we were thinking we'd really like to have a baby, and so we went for a year, two years, more than two years, and realized we were not getting pregnant, and we were really worried about it. We didn't know what to do. We went and saw the doctor, found out I had a very severe thyroid problem, and they just said, you're not going to have babies. They just said, that's just not something that's going to happen for you. It's pretty much you're not going to have children. And we grieved that. We were super sad about it, but we didn't want to go through a lot of different treatments or routes like that. We thought there's lots of babies out there that need a home. And so we went through all the foster care process, all the adoptive process, all that stuff, and um, decided that we wanted to foster kids. And it was kind of interesting at the time, this is a weird thing, but they would put kids into categories for um, fostering and adoption. And at the time, in the state that we were in, any child who was interracial was placed in the same category as a child who might have spina bifida or severe medical problems, AIDS, things like that. So kiddos who uh, just happened to come from a couple of races in their family were not being fostered because they were in this category where, you know, families who maybe just didn't have the resources to have huge medical needs and there's these little kiddos. So we just, uh, we fostered interracial children. And so that was kind of fun because I'm, I'm the whitest person I know. I mean, there's white people and then there's me. Because I'm like, I can't believe you just laugh at that. Y'all are a tough crowd. I'm just telling you. Like, I am the whitest person that I've ever met. I'm from the Northwest. I'm a tree hugger. I'm, I'm, I'm a little liberal. Please don't throw things at me. I'm a little tiny bit of a feminist. No applause. Just some money. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Just a little. And so, you know, I, we said, well, sure, we'll take interracial kids. And we wanted little little children. Um, That's kind of, we want babies. We had the room for that. And so uh, we went away for Christmas break. We got everything done so that we could foster kids. And lo and behold, I turned up pregnant. And we didn't have any kids yet, so we got home. And I kid you not, the day we got home from our long trip, they called us and said, we have a 19-month-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old. So I'm pregnant, and now I'm about to have a toddler and a three-and-a-half-year-old. Um, and so that was really an exciting thing. I don't know what crazy person thought that would be appropriate. Like we knew what we were doing. You know, I was 26, we'd never had kids before, and now we're pregnant, we had two little kiddos. I'll never forget, this is kind of a little sideline that's hilarious. When they called us and said the kids were coming, they said we don't have anything for them because they came out of a terrible situation. The lady who brought them to us, the, the foster care worker, she had found some girls' clothes in the trunk. That's all she had from her own kids. They had literally no clothes to wear. So she dressed them up in these clothes, and so they came to us, two little boys wearing girls' clothes. So I told Tim, Go to the store, go to Kmart, find some clothes and diapers. He doesn't know. We have no kids. So he told me later, he just stood in the aisle and he waited till a mom came. And then he was like, So, if you had, say, a 14 or 15 month old, what diapers would you buy? And the lady was like, Uh, those ones. He's like, Okay. So we bought whatever the lady, he finally told her what was gone and bought the whatever she said to bring home. But um, I had to take my boys to Walmart. 
And at that point, um, that was a little bit later after we had them for a while, I was visibly pregnant and um, white. And my kids, one of my little boys, um, is half African-American, half white. He had really curly hair, brown skin, and bright blue eyes, just like mine. And the other little boy had, um, he was half Hawaiian and half white, um, as brown as a bee, little silky hair. But long story short, I'm pregnant. I have one kid that looks one way and one kid that looks another way. And it's pretty clear that the older one looks a lot like me. Are you starting to get a feel for me? <laughs> and it's Walmart. And I'm youngish, and I looked younger then a lot younger then. That was when I looked really young. And I remember getting in line at Walmart and I'm standing there in the line and people would give me looks. It's true. And finally the lady behind me said, well, I wonder who the baby daddy is for this baby. And I just, I didn't know what to say. I wanted, I guess I could turn around and say, oh, those aren't my children, but I'd rather die because they're my kids. They were my kids every day that they lived in my house. And the day that I had to give them back was one of the most painful days of my life. So I surely was not going to say that. And what could I say? So I just turned around and I said, you don't know me. You don't know anything about my kids. You mind your own business. And I turned back around and went through the checkout. But I share that story to tell you that one of the best ways that I think that we can stop the scourge of abortion is to be very careful of how we judge one another. And I say that with deep humility because I know how judgmental I can be about things that are just really none of my business. And yet, does that bring life to anyone? It does not. What brings life is hope, kindness, love, generosity. God himself is the judge. And so I just want to encourage you with that little story when, and I know it's true of your church, when somebody comes into your church and, you know, they've got kids and they all look like they got a different dad, just love them. You don't know. Just love everybody without reservation. There is never the wrong thing to do. So that's just my little story to share with you about our little boys. And Amen. We want to just walk in love. Praise God. All right. We'll just hang out there for a second. And... I'm going to get my, my words because I'm too old to remember them all the time.